Hey family, are you having questions about what's going to happen during these last days? Are you a believer that we are in the last of the last days? Well, you've came to the right spot. Welcome to Surviving the Last Days podcast, where we're going to explore end time prophecies as well as scripture. Let's get started, family, and fortify each other's faith. Welcome back, listeners. So you are now tuned in to Surviving the Last Days podcast, a podcast about end times, but mostly about events that are to come, prophecies, um, you know, where we just basically describing where we are on the prophecy time schedule. Um you know, this generation of people, like we're, what, we're in the 20th century? Is that what they call it? Um, our time period or whatever? Um, this generation of people are experiencing a lot of things that we never experienced before. And because of, <clears throat> excuse me, and because of that, I wanted to do this podcast to basically foretell or or recite prophecy on why these things are happening and what's to expect with the the changes and especially with the United States um the different changes of the different systems in the United States especially the financial system which is what I'm going to get into today so my name is Ashley Shante I'm the host of Surviving the Last Days podcast um Welcome back for previous listeners and new listeners. I'm glad you decided to click on that uh, my cover, my podcast cover image and um, listen to the podcast. So today's episode is called Evolution of Money and the Dwindling U.S. Dollar. So I don't know if you've been under a rock, but there's been a lot of talk and a lot of rumors and a lot of conversations had about the United States dollar. And you yourself might be experiencing the effects of the U.S. dollar not being able to compete with inflation, not being able to compete um, as far as wages goes, and not being able to compete with our rent prices and energy assistant bills. I mean, energy assistant is, I mean, so high. I even saw one of uh, one of our American rappers on some type of video saying uh, his name is Plaz. He's an American rapper from Florida, and he said um, he was so fed up with the in his energy bill because you know he lives in a big house, probably a lot of square feet, you know. And he's so fed up with his energy bill, he went on video saying, come cut him off. Come cut it off, then." That's literally what he said. Come cut it off, then." <laughs> I mean, because it's to the point, y'all, where you getting $1,000, $3,000 energy bills. And, you know, depending on what state you live in, during the wintertime, I think it's a federal law that they can't turn your energy off, you know, um... They can't cut it off because you might freeze to death. So um, basically, but they have a lot of different programs in place and uh, charities in place that pay people's energy assistance bills off. But um, it's just you may be experiencing the U.S. dollar not being able to really hit the mark like it used to, you know, or if it ever did. Um, you just ain't got enough of it, it seemed like. I think there's a scripture in Haggai, Haggai that says, you know, whoever works for wages puts their money in a bag full of holes. As soon as you get it, it just drain right through, you know. I think I mentioned that scripture before. Um, but, but that scripture in Haggai was actually, I think, prophecy because it's talking about today how the money that we earn or make or get whatever way uh, is worthless, it, it just doesn't keep up with the rent prices, the gas prices, uh, the, the the educational needs that our children, educational uh, needs that our children need. Um, it's like 
this whole it's this United States economy um, is just crashing little by little. I mean, the U.S. the banks are all closing. You know, I I know I read an article uh, last year about PNC bank locations closing down, and not only them different different banks are closing down. Um, I think even the U.S. central banking banks were uh, closing down and people were trying to get their money out. Um, and you have the FDIC, right? That's supposed to be like the bank insurance. They supposed to like refund you your money. But I think they only refund up to $100. So if the bank crash and you're a multimillionaire, well, you're only going to get $100,000 back. Because I think that's how much they fund up to. I don't know if it's a guarantee you get it back or it was a first come first by a certain basis. I don't know. Um, but I know that that's supposed to be like the policy or whatever. So, but I, I, I can assume that most wealthy people don't just let their money, all their money sit in the bank. They let their money work for them. They put it in investments and stuff like that. They don't put all that money in the bank because they it ain't insured all of it. Ain't insured only a hundred thousand that's uninsured. But anyway, um, with that being said, I have been in banks and seen ATMs that say you know out of cash. Now, how's your ATM gonna be out of cash? And it's supposed to that's its job is to give me cash money. So we're gonna get into it, y'all. We're gonna have a a, quite a good conversation. Um, I hope you got some downtime and maybe you want to take some notes too. Um, scriptural notes or just notes on the conversation so you can share it with a friend or share this podcast link or whatever. But I hope you got some downtime because it's, it's, it's going to be a conversation to be had. And if you want to have all your your thoughts and your brain cells on point, then it's, this is a sit down conversation. This is not a, you can walk and listen to this conversation. You can exercise and listen to this conversation, but it's definitely a conversation that you got to be in your zone by yourself because this is a deep conversation that we're about to go into. And it's going to be enlightening. It's going to be encouraging. And ultimately what I want out of this conversation for all of us is to get the understanding of how to depend more so on the economy of Yahweh, on the economy of Yah rather than the United States economy. Um, I want us to wean from the American dollar, not only wean from the American dollar, wean from the U S currency system altogether. So that when the mark of the beast system comes, and if it is something where you have to, I don't know what the mark of the beast system will look like, but it, let's let's guess because I've already been seeing videos on this. But let's guess if it's a pay by palm strategy where they want to insert a chip either in your forehead or in your palm, and you have to use that chip to scan grocery items and you have to use that chip basically you have to use that chip and take that chip to survive but this is surviving the last days and when we don't survive off of the u.s my podcast is survival of the last days surviving and enduring for christ and yahweh so when the mark of the beast system come i want us to be prepared you know and getting education on how not to fall into the trap of I got to get a chip in my hand on my forehead that needs to be scanned. Why don't we wean ourselves from the U.S. currency system altogether? Well, how do we do that, Ashley? I've talked about it in previous episodes, if you want to listen to my past, past episodes, but how do we do that? It's simply by living off the land, getting our food from the land. That's free. All you got to do is by the seeds and once you get the seeds you 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 produce more fruits and vegetables with seeds and put those back into the ground and they produce more fruits and vegetables with seeds get some chickens some cows whatever you if you're a meat eater get those things uh understand the border system if you got a cow with that that you know can produce milk or a goat that can produce milk you can trade that with somebody 
who got a, a peach tree, you know, understand the border system, start learning the border system now, start practicing the border system now with your local neighbors. But most of all, how to win yourself complete, completely from the U.S. currency economy is to buy land, grow your own food, um, you know, uh, build the house on the land or move the trailer on the land. Uh, be out of debt. Be out of debt. You know, um, when we're in the last days, when we're surviving the last days, we can't really owe no mortgages. I mean, because if you owe a mortgage to the bank and the bank say, we don't accept digital money, you need to take the market of so we can scan your palm on your forehead, then now you're back in that trap. You got to lose your house because you don't want to take the market of beast. So um, we don't want to be in debt. So therefore, we need to buy land, build our own house. Land is about $4,000 per acre. And that's in Tennessee and Arizona and North Carolina. That's the lowest prices I've seen. Y'all have made income tax checks over the years that, that could have added up to be about three acres of land by now. Um, compound living, buying enough acres for people to live on together as a community. This could be your family members if they all are on the same page as you. If your family members aren't all awakened or woke or, or of the remnant of God, then you can find other people that are and put them on that land if you have enough acres. And yes, compound living and do the border system with that within that community. Um, but buy land, uh, build your own home, grow your own food. Because then at that point, what do you need money for? You you growing your own food. You didn't, you got a well. You got a well and a, what they call a water pump, water pump to pump your water from the well. Um, you got a water system, right? Um, you got, they got energy, other energy options to make energy. Uh, the windmill option is the one I know about. Um, it's just a lifestyle that looks like homesteading. Um, some people might call it a lifestyle. Oh, that sounds like a Mississippi back your woods lifestyle, but no, it's not. If you look up people who are doing homesteading, um, who literally are living completely off grid is what they call it. Not getting their supply from they're not getting their energy supply from the U S not getting their water supply from the U S I mean, the U S if you want to talk about the U S water supply, just for a hot second, um, I took a biotechnology class at, at my university here where I stay and I knew about them recycling water, sewage water and old nasty river water. I knew about that. It just came to the forefront now in videos and TikTok videos where everybody's talking about, oh, they, they recycling our shower water. Actually, guys, I'm sorry to let you know, they've been doing that. And I learned that in biotechnology. They put microbes in the water, and, and the microbes supposedly clean it out completely. But there's no there's no guarantee that the water is clean, clean completely, right? But if you get your own water system, your well, and get your water from the most highest natural resources, waterfalls, uh, I don't know if you, could, you might want to live next to a waterfall or anything like that. But well, know how to dig a well and get water. Uh, YouTube videos can show you this. There are a lot of off-grid seminars, a lot of gardening workshops. I'm attending a gardening workshop uh, and at the end of February and March. Um, there's a lot of off-grid speakers speaking at different events. You got to look those events up. And it don't matter what city you're in. You can look it up in Nashville, North Carolina, St. Louis. This type of stuff is going on. So you can always catch an event on gardening, uh, off-grid living. It's very important, to, first of all, for your mental health, because I know you stressed out about the U.S. dollar, okay, how, how it's just not accumulating enough. And then you, we think we can save it. But I learned from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, why would you save something that is 
decreasing in value. <laughs> you better put it to work where I can go to work, if anything. You know, invest it in somewhere I can go to work. But main thing is, y'all, is to get that land. And um, if you got to do Uber, I'm talking about if you got to do Uber like it's going out of style to get on-demand money. You know what? Do Uber, do DoorDash, do Instacart. Uh, you know, partner up with somebody if you ain't got a spouse. Partner up with your children. See if they all want to chip in on buying land and chip in on uh, painting or doing whatever you got to do for building the house. And you don't need a large house. You you don't got to be fancy. Like, you don't got to do all... Like, I would just, like, myself, two acres of land and a 1900 square feet house. That's it. Like, I don't need... I like them little one-level houses. You know, I know they make bi-level houses, and they make two-story and three-story houses. And if you want to build that on your land, that's great. But me, I'm comfortable with uh, a nice, you know, outlet or layer, what they call a nice layout. Um, I'm not really fond of shotgun houses, but I know that, you know, some people in the South like shotgun houses. Some people like tiny houses. You know, anything they can do to save on rent. But some people like uh, doing that. But me personally, I like a nineteen about a house about a nineteen square foot with a basement because basements are very important and will be very important uh, with the catastrophes that's going on around the world. You know, um, but yeah, that is basically how you win yourself from the U.S. dollar is by living completely off grid. But let's get into the evolution of money, okay? And the dwindling American dollar. So, to all my old school lovers of music, have you heard the song by the OJs? For the love of money. Do things, do things, do things. For the love of money. Let's look at those lyrics. I would like to pull up those lyrics for you. OJ is an American uh, singing group. I don't know what you would label their genre, label their genre of music. But they have a song. That was created back in the day called For the Love of Money. And it goes, money, 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 money. Something like that. Something to that nature. Um, and say, for the love of money, people will steal. Here you go. People will steal from their mother. For the love of money, people will rob their own brother. I know you've seen the movie Dead Presidents with Lorenz Tate and Chris Tucker. In that movie, they rob some type of Federal Reserve banking truck with tons of paper greenback bills on it. Um... They were living in dire situations. They were vets that got out of the army, got out of the Vietnam army, and were, I mean, Smokey played a vet that was hooked on drugs because realistically a lot of vets that got out of the Vietnam War wasn't supported by the U.S. government. They, they went straight into poverty. They were disabled, got on disability, and uh, some of them did turn to drugs. Uh, like Chris Tucker's character in the movie Dead Presidents and Lorenz Tate just some people you know when they live in poverty and bad situations you know they just get desperate so Lorenz Tate character just got desperate in a movie of Dead Presidents and he conspired to rob a, a Federal Reserve truck or some type of truck with tons of greenback paper bills on it and then you have the song by the OJs for the love of money People will rob and steal, kill. I mean, you probably can think in your personal life what money has called what what money has caused people to do. I mean, when people get desperate for money, 
they do do some things unheard of, okay? Um, money over the years have accumulated this type of energy where it's like people people won't chase that. It, it, it has accumulated some type of energy that causes people to chase, literally chase after it, even though they never get rich chasing after it. Um, to work hours and hours abandoning their own families, not being emotional available for their families, not being physically available for their families, to chase after this this money, this paper, this green bill, greenback paper bill. This This money was just invented. The first... U.S. greenback paper bill was invented in 1861 to fund the United States Civil War. But if we could go back further, further in the United States, C-notes, the first dollar C-note was introduced in the year 1690. A little bit after the first Hebrew men and women came over to operate as slaves in bondage. Um, or, Or the first men and women of color that were sold from West Africa came over to the United States in 1619. These C notes were paper as well, but they weren't greenback and they were called C notes because they were the 13 colonies currency. And so they were colonial notes, C notes. And then we went into the greenback paper bills in the United States. Um, to get more specific, specific, am I saying it right? Specific. Um, to get more specific, I have a list here of the evolution of U.S. money or timeline of U.S. money. So in 1690, as I said, colonial notes, paper notes, or paper money, it literally, it literally looks like a an old-fashioned piece of paper was introduced in sixteen, the year 1690. Uh, there was some problems with it or some discrepancies with the 13 colonies because there wasn't the entire uni- United States at, in 1690. Uh, there were only 13 colonies that made up, uh, I guess you would say, this so-called United States. And um, there were some problems with that, that form of currency, the C-notes. So um, they introduced... The dollar, which was still a white piece of paper. Um, It wasn't green at that point, and it was only it was only one dollar. And I think it said Congress adopts the dollar as the. uh, Money unit of the United States of America, the official Congress adopts the dollar as the official currency of the United States of America. So it's a dollar. It looks like a piece of paper, like a notebook paper with uh, no presidents on it, Um, just some writing on it, like just some writing on it. Okay. Then the U.S. said, okay, we're going to turn our money green. In 1861, the greenback bills were introduced. That's when you start getting your presidents on her. You got your Abe Lincoln, you got your Benjamin. Well, you ain't have Benjamin, I don't think, at that time, but you did. You might have had Abe Lincoln. Um, so you went to greenbacks. Uh, then the paper currency started having a background color in 1905. They added in God We Trust in 1957. In 1990, uh, they did some more design. They did a redesign in 1996. I know that uh, if we can back up in 1914, 
the hundred dollar bill was introduced with Benjamin, the president Benjamin, the U.S. president Benjamin's face on it. 1996, they did another redesign of the money bills. Um, then there was a new color, they said, in 2003 of the U.S. dollar. I'm trying to figure out what was the new color. Was it blue, y'all? Because I don't know. They said it was a new color, so it wasn't really green. It ain't, money ain't really green, is it? Not now. I mean, I know people call it blue faces. So is the money blue now? You know, I don't really be paying attention to paper money, and I rarely get paper money these days because they make us do everything digital now and load everything on cards, you know. So I really don't be holding paper money like that. And I could take out a dollar right now and over and see if what color it is. But it don't, I don't know. They said a new color was introduced um, in 2003, but I can't really see the words because it's so tiny. So I don't know what color was introduced. Um, and then 2004, part two of the new color of money. So money ain't really green no more, is it? So that's the evolution of uh, money in the United States. But let's talk about the evolution of money over time, period. And, you know, period, like, to Bible times, everything. So, I like to always take things back, way back to the Garden of Eden. So, in the Garden of Eden with the first human beings, Adam and Eve, of course, they didn't have to have money. They didn't have to have a border system. They were the only people in that land. And when they produce other children i think god's plan was for them to all live off the land so nobody would need to trade anything because it would belong to everybody we were supposed to be one big happy family under god one nation under god if you will so i don't think the border system would have ever came place came in place if the garden of eden would have never if they would have never got kicked out the garden of eden but since they did get kicked out of the garden of eden and sin was introduced with them biting the fruit, um, evolution of money came into place. So there's the border system where you trade animals or or something for in exchange for something that another farmer has or another person has. Um, you don't need money for this because you're technically still living off the land, so you just trade what you don't have on your land Hey, I got a hazelnut tree. I need some hazelnuts. Okay, I got a goat that produces milk. You need some milk. We trade our cow. You want the goat? I'll take your hazelnut tree seeds or whatever. Um, And then we went to gold. Just pure, solid gold. Um, We traded that, you know, to buy things. Um, just shiny blocks of gold. And then we went to metal coins. The Bible might describe these coins as shekels, silver shekels, and gold shekels. If you guys could remember, I believe Judas, who traded, who, who betrayed Jesus, our Messiah, or Yeshua, our Messiah, he was paid 30 shekels. Um, to betray the Messiah. And those shekels would be worth, I think, $260 in American, in American U.S. dollar, I think. But um, those were coins. And the U.S. also adopted the coin currency because we have, here in the United States, we have pennies, we have dimes, we have nickels, we have quarters, Um, I know some people don't like pennies, you know, but nowadays I think everybody should like a penny, right? Everybody should be saving every penny. Um, And you know what? You should probably save, put back some pennies anyway, because maybe one day you can sell them on eBay or something. You know, people are selling, you know, money from 1861. They are. I don't know if the money is authentic, but it must be because they got it in museums. Like you can go to Washington Washington, D.C. to the National um, Museum of American History and you can find an authentic C-note or an, or, or an American dollar from the 1800s. You know, so so if you want to save your dollar 
while you can before it start before people start using it to to flame fires and use it for tissue and wiping their nose, you could go ahead and save it because it might be worth something, you know. And and if it it might be worth something as far as you know to be put on display, not worth something to spin, of course. Um, you know how these rich folks like to buy art and put it in a house and stuff. That that's what the American dollar gonna be in in, in the future, just a a wall, a wall decor, because it ain't gonna be able to be spent on nothing. Um. So we went to metal coins, shekels, or whatever you want to call them in Bible times, and coins in the United States. Silver and gold coins. I think in the United States, we just have silver coins. We don't really have gold coins. We we have pennies, they copper. But um, then we went to paper money. Like I said, in the United States, the first greenback paper bill was introduced in 1861 to fund the um, Civil War. I mean, whoever thought of that bright idea was just, they they are genius. I mean, hey, we don't have enough coins. You say we run out of coins? Oh, we're running out of coins. So, you know, it, it takes money to produce silver and gold coins. Y'all know that? It takes money to produce that. Um, You got to get the silver and the gold, and, and the cost of silver and gold is always valuable, you know. So somebody thought of a bright idea during the Civil War. Let's just print out some paper, y'all. Shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. Uh, but le- they said, let's just print out some paper. You know, let's just print out some paper. And um, that's what they did. They printed out some paper. And it was greenback money. As of 1861, they could print out as much as they wanted or whenever they wanted. And people would look at it as valuable. And, and, it, and now money today, like I said has accumulated this high power energy where people are doing some disgusting things for it. I mean, they're, they're like the song of the OJ said, they're betraying their brother, their mother, their sister. And even the Bible in first Timothy chapter six, verse 10 says, um, what does it say? Um, it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. If you guys want to look that up with me. Yeah, that's what it says. Okay. First Timothy chapter six, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. So people have gained this type of love for money that they don't even have for human beings. They think that money is their survival tactic, is their lifeline. But we see now today that money didn't buy us anything during the pandemic. We couldn't keep our homes. They were in foreclosure. We could barely buy food. And when we were able to get some money to buy food, the food was out of stock. So it showed us how dependable that greenback paper bill is during the pandemic time. It was not that dependable. So moving along in the evolution of money, now we're we're on to plastic cards. So the, the credit cards, uh, I think they were introduced, they said, around 1930s officially or 1920s. Um, where is it at? Where is it at? I know I had a timeline for the credit cards, too. But we'll just say around 1930s, credit plastic physical credit cards were introduced. And that was looked at as a good thing because, oh, we don't have to have no money. You're going to give us money on this credit card? Cool. And then we just pay y'all back? Well, now we know that's silly, right? Even the scripture says a a borrower will become a slave to the lender. Um. the lender, the banks making these credit cards and the institutions, businesses making these credit cards, they're lending you money, but you got to pay it back with interest. And some of them have high interest rates. I don't promote credit cards because it is a form of debt. It is a form of revolving debt, but you just got to put the same money back on there that you could have saved, could have spent yourself. I don't understand the whole process of credit credit cards. And I don't think the U.S currency system 
does anymore either. And that's why they're doing away with it slowly, you, you know, slowly. Because, you know, we still got to have a card in our hand now. We got a cash app card. You know, you might have a PayPal card. You might have uh, a gift card even, you know, plastic cards. We got to have them now. But things are slowly starting to change and evolve to digital, where you can pay digitally. Um, and soon, of course, the market of B system where you pay by palm or pay by scanning of the forehead or something like that. But yeah, plastic cards are introduced. And then now today we're on electronic money, which is what digital money. Um, this is where I think everything is heading right now. It hasn't completely done away with paper money because this is gradually happening, right? But you do notice you go into the U.S. post office and it says only cards are accepted, no cash accepted. Or you go into the bank, like I said, or, or see a ATM, we're out of cash. Or maybe you might even see in your area reverse ATMs where they ask you to put in your cash and we'll give you a card. Please get rid of your money and give us a and, you know, and um, and we'll give you a card. Um, so we're on to electronic money now, digital money. Um, this is money like on a phone app. You'll see your money on a phone app, or you know, um, a laptop or something. Like most people nowadays, they don't really use physical money for anything because we pay our bills electronically. Um, if you you bad like that, you got your bills on auto pay, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, um, we pay our bills electronically. Uh, you can pay for food electronically. Hey, hey, what about the, um? oh, this just came. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The QR code. You don't even need a physical card because guess what? We just need to scan the QR code to pay for this meal. The QR code kind of reminds me of the Market of Beast too because it's like you're scanning a QR code on your phone but it, but then later on they might introduce we want to scan your forehead or your your palm we want to put a chip chip in your palm or your forehead uh and you know Satan is very cunning he's going to make it look so good like it's for your benefit you got to you're not even going to be he's going to really deceive the elect um, as the scripture says, he's not even, it's not even going to look blatant. Like he is something sinister has happened. It's going to look like, Oh, you know, um, fraud is so bad and we're trying to decrease on fraud. Um, so we're just wanting to insert a chip or a barcode in your hand or your forehead because that way your identification can be scanned and nobody can steal it. Um, it'll all be in the palm of your hand, literally, um, they just gonna make it look so good and dress it up so nice, honey. Uh, they gonna be they he, he and, and he causes old and young. What the scripture say? He causes old and young to take the mark, because right now, why wouldn't people take the mark? People love money, even the digital currency money. They love it. They love the fact to that they can get what they need when they pay something. But they don't even understand that everything you need is free. Water is free. Food is free. You just water you can get from a well or a, fire, or a waterfall. Um, food is free. You can make your own energy system. That's supposed to be free. Make your own uh, conditioners with, with with coconut coconut oil. If you got a coconut tree. Uh, you can use coconut oil for cooking. You can use it for skin softening and skin, uh, smooth skin. You can use it for uh, the pulp for conditioner. I mean, yeah, the economy of yeah is so abundant and full of resources, y'all. We just missing out on it. We are missing out on it by depending on the United States economy or the world economy. Um, so yeah, and the last form of in the, in the evolution of money right now is cryptocurrency. And uh, what is cryptocurrency? Because I didn't know exactly what it was. I'm not really into that, but I looked it up. And it is digital money 
that doesn't require a bank or a financial institution to verify transactions. And this would mean if your money all go into cryptocurrency, you don't even need banks no more. All the banks going to be closing down, which they have started to close down. A lot of different banks are starting to close down. Um, and you can, and the cryptocurrency can be used for purchases or in, as an investment. So will there be a time or a year when they say, hey, guys, we're officially 100% digital currency society. And if you have cryptocurrency... Or if you want to exchange your money for cryptocurrency, or you want, to, or maybe you might show up at the bank one day and they might say, "We ain't got your paper money. We only got cryptocurrency. It 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 didn't convert it into cryptocurrency." And now you gotta take cryptocurrency. You know what I'm saying? So it's just crazy. But that's that's where we are now with it with the United States currency. Uh, we are into digital uh, currency. Um, but we're not at a hundred percent cryptocurrency, but I was thinking maybe you could get there too. Um, but the next thing after cryptocurrency, if I could take a wild guess is the market of beast. That's your currency. And it's either going to be installed like a, like, you know, in your palm or your forehead and you're going to scan it like you scan your QR codes on your phone. To pay for stuff. So as we as we become as we are passive society and we just let them do whatever they want to do to us, we don't fight back and say, No, I want to keep my plastic cards. No, I want to keep my my paper money. I don't want to go into uh every decade could have fought for to keep they saying even a decade of the border system could have said, you know what, we're gonna stick to the border system. We don't wanna change. We don't have to follow the masses but because we are few in number and that that road to um of believers is narrow uh the wicked people seem to be a larger amount and they're going to go with the u.s economy rather than y'all's economy so that's where we are now with it and that's the evolution of of um that's the evolution Um, that's the evolution of money. Yeah. That's my evolution of money presentation. And I give myself, a, I, I bow down and hopefully you guys will give me a hand clap for that presentation because that was a lot. <laughs> But anywho, um, so now, where are we with the dwindling of the U.S. dollar? Well, I talked about it a bit. Um, a lot of countries are conspiring together, meeting up together, and a lot of conversations, political conversations are being had. And people are not wanting the United States dollar. Uh, they're not wanting to... They're not seeing the value in it or they're not trying to mess with it. And um, the United States is, I think, learning that. And they're trying to come up with a way to get rid of cash completely. And they even have this app called Fed Now. It's supposed to be like Cash App. Because if you haven't heard, I think around last year, the Cash App CEO, CEO was unexpectedly murdered. Now, I'm not a person all about conspiracy but that was around the same time that the United States government wanted to make a deal with him somehow to for him to come and be a partner with uh, the Fed Now app by the federal government but you can look into that on your own time it's a lot of things that go on you know that us common folks us average little small folks don't really know about but when you awaken you come across this kind of information. It's, it's just it's just exposed to you, you know. But um, so now we're dealing with cryptocurrencies and things like that. Um, we're dealing with these behaviors of people, these last day mentality people who love money, 
um, that's willing to do anything for money, even though that money paperback is uh, the greenback bills are decreasing in value. Um, we're seeing places and business that saying cash is not accepted. You got to have um, debit or credit. And we have a lot of people like that's not really preparing and not depending on the economy of Yah, which is living off the natural resources that Yah produced for us. Um, when I go on social media, um, I'm seeing people just carrying on, not really being vocal about everything that's going on. I don't know if they don't see it or they're ignoring it or they're just saying, hey, I'm going to live my life and when it all crash, I figure it out then. Maybe they are the people that have that motto in life. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Well, I don't know about you guys. I don't want to cross that bridge of hunger and famine. It's hard. When you hungry, you be mad as a mug. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be cross that bridge when I get there. I want to prepare. I know that y'all is going to help us. In the last days, especially when the tribulation hit, but I want to also put my works in too to accommodate my faith in Yah. And so I think that as the remnant of God and as believers in the Most High and a Christ follower, we should be vocalizing and spreading the word to any and everybody about what's happening and what's transpiring. And it's not to be doom and gloom, but it's to let you know that this is actually redemption near that you, if you give your life over to Christ and you live for the kingdom of God, that you will not only receive everlasting life when this whole entire thing crashes, um, But you can also get out of the stress of the matrix now. You can release yourself from this system now. Like I said, the people who are depending on the economy of Yah or the land of resources that Yah naturally produced for man and woman, they're living off grid. They have adopted a minimalist mentality and they're living off grid. And they they are homemakers. They are homesteaders. They make everything from scratch. Their health is better because they're not getting a uh, uh, food and drug administration to, to regulate their food. Their food is not regulated. They can eat it naturally from farm to table. And yes, people that's living off grid, they do work. Um, they do have businesses, but their businesses are like, you know, either they could be an herbalist or they make natural hair products or they're a natural herbalist and they sell natural herbal things from their farm. Or they might be a, a, a food seller where they sell natural farmers market food. Um, me, when I decide to, to um, buy land, when I have accumulated enough funds, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to earn money through podcasting to build my off-grid lifestyle. Um, Most people who are off-grid, they don't, like I said, they don't really need money because they have all the resources they need off-grid. But when it comes time to still, you know, being a part of society, whenever you want to dip back into society and you want to go to a concert, right, you want to live a little... You do need money because those venues, those concert venues, take plastic credit cards or or money. Um, those concert venues in in the main in the matrix, they take money. But you're not totally dependent on money for your necessities like food, water, lights, uh, fire you know, electricity or whatever, you're not solely dependent. Your livelihood is not solely dependent on the matrix. So people that live off grid, their life is not solely dependent on the matrix. They can live for free, really. Um, And then when they want to tap back into the matrix for concerts or recreational activities or amusement parks with their family or visiting a bookstore or cafe um they can use 
the matrix money, the United States money up until the point when it's no longer able to be used. Right. Um, because we're in a period where we can kind of, we can do both, right? We can dip into the matrix sometime, but we don't want to depend on the matrix. Like right now, all of us are depending on the matrix system. And now we're suffering from inflation and rent prices and gas prices and food prices. That's why it's best to start planning, guys, how you're going to get out of this money web, um, this money imprisonment, if you will, because the money, the United States dollar is just not holding up. It's just not cutting the bill. Literally, it's not. The average rent price in the United States is seventeen hundred dollars. Um, you looking for an apartment or, and the average job is not paying that much in the United States. It's definitely not paying enough where you can pay seventeen hundred dollars a month by yourself or two thousand dollars a month by yourself. Um, uh, that's just that's just not happening. Um. Uh, what else did I want to tell y'all about? So, yeah. So, um, the average rent price, the average energy assistance bill, you know, um, sewer bill that comes with indoor plumbing, water bill that comes with indoor plumbing. You got to pay these people. And when you don't pay them, they cut it off. When there gets to be a time where you don't want to take the market of beasts to pay a bill, guess what they're going to do to you? They're going to cut all your resources off. Why? Because you're depending on the U.S., the, you, the world economy, your country's economy instead of Yah's economy, God's economy. So now, if you don't want to, if you refuse to take the market of beasts and you're in the matrix, depending on the matrix and still in the matrix, you're going to get your water supply cut off you're going to get your electricity gas cut off so you won't be warm or be able to heat up or cook food. You don't have no survival tactic skills because you haven't really paid attention to it or, or put your interest in it because you're so caught up in celebrating your birthday and just really living full time life in the matrix instead of preparing for a kingdom, New Jerusalem life and, and be preparing for a a life where you're solely dependent on the economy of Yahweh. You know, because that's important. And, um, you know, if you get, if you depend on the matrix 100%, um, then, uh, then you're going to be, we're going to be in some big trouble. We're going to be in some big trouble. I mean, right now we're in big trouble. I mean, who's not stressed out about working 40 hours a week? Who's not stressed out about trading their time for money? Who Who's not stressed out about having to decide on, can I get a new outfit or do I have to pay my gas bill, my electric bill this, this month? Who's not, who's not tired of uh, payment plans? Who's not tired of, 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 car insurance, high interest rates and, uh, and dental insurance, high interest rates and health insurance, high interest rates. You literally got to go to Turkey to get your teeth fixed for less or Cuba or Dominican Republic and pay with the U S dollar at this point while it's, while it's worth something, right? Who's not tired of the, the costly expenses of college I mean, have you seen the United States student debt loan? Oh my God, college is expensive, and 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 nine out of ten it ain't really worth anything. It, I mean, they giving out business and bachelor's degrees, masters be like it's going out of style, and, and in the future AI gonna take over all these jobs anyway. Artificial intelligence is gonna take over all the jobs. You better we better get we better start learning about the border system. And we better start teaching our kids about how to use their natural gifts from Yah again to produce any type of income. Um, we go to these schools and, and they indoctrinate us and, and 
but now they use an AI to be your psychologist and your therapist. Download this therapy app. You don't need to pay no psychiatrists or no psychologists. You even got telehealth where a nurse can tell you what's wrong with you over the phone. You you don't think an artificial intelligence person can do that? You know, I'm just saying, they building robots already now. You, you, you might go to the doctor's office one day and have a, a robot just talking to you right there. We ain't got to pay nobody. You know, they work all the hours we need them to work because they're not human. You know? The way the world is turning and the way the work system is turning is not evolving upwards. It's taking humans out from basically surviving. You won't be able to work just like in the pandemic when we wasn't able to work. And the jobs made everybody either work from home, if you could work from home, or you just got laid off. And a lot of people lost money. A lot of businesses lost money. A lot of entertainers lost money. Um, everything was closed down. This whole global climate issue um, is making them strategize and, and it's going to cost a lot, you know? So... We just need to not depend on a matrix. There's nothing wrong with tapping into the matrix sometimes to go, like I said, to hang out, go to a concert, eat at a nice restaurant. But to be solely dependent on your whole lifestyle surrounded by the matrix, that's pretty dangerous. And the people that you see that are act like they just living a good old jolly carefree life in the matrix and they're not thinking about all the stuff that's crashing around them and behind them in front of them they're gonna be the ones that you run from because them gonna be the ones that take the mark of the beast first oh i gotta take the mark of the beast you mean i can't take go in this restaurant unless i have the mark where i want to celebrate my birthday and i want to have fireworks and everything so i'm gonna take the mark of the beast just like during that covid pandemic they were banning people from restaurants and what do people do? Say, I'm gonna get the COVID shot just so I can be able to I'm gonna get my COVID shot card just so I can be able to go in here. Cause people love the matrix, baby. And they like what the matrix is off. I like good restaurants. I like good restaurants. I like concerts too. But when it comes to a choice to make to take the market of beast or do that, oh no, I make my own entertainment on in, in the mate and on uh, I make my own entertainment with my family. That's why it's very important for you ladies to get husbands. And it's very f- important for you husbands to get wives and build families as y'all wanted you to do in the beginning. That's your original purpose, right? For help, meet, and headship. Amen. So that's so that you can get to the point where all your family members can live off grid with you and raise their grandkids and raise your grandkids on a uh, off grid compound living too. Everybody had their own acre on the land and their own house on the land. But y'all still meet up to do y'all own concerts, to do y'all own book clubs, to do y'all own social events. So you ain't got to take the mark of the beast to say, I want to visit this. I want to go to this concert. Like, come on now. be Draw closer to your family in these last days. And a family doesn't mean blood. Family is y'all's family. Whoever is a remnant of God, draw close to those people. Draw close to your spouse if you are truly in love and you want to be better um, husband and wife. Go to the Bible to get the lessons you need to uh, be have a more healthier, loving marriage. But make your marriage stronger. Uh, make your kids uh, formulate tighter bonds with your kids. That means that you might have to sacrifice some hours at work. Or you might just have to work hard temporarily to build up the funds you need to buy that land, right? Buy that land while you're able to buy that land. Because when the market of the system comes in, you ain't going to be able to use any currency but the chip in your hand. So let's go ahead and, and while we can use the currency we got here in the United States or wherever you want to buy land at. There are people living off grid in Mexico. Uh, living, wherever, whatever form land in whatever country. That you want to live off grid, you can do it. Build the money up. Like I said, in the U.S., I know here in the U.S., uh, it's four thousand uh, on average, around four thousand per acre. You can save that up. You can do it. You can do it. You can 
sell things on eBay. You can formulate a business. You can Uber, you can Instacart, you can DoorDash. You can work a regular 40-hour a week job. Hey, man, you, you can partner up with your sister, your brother, or whoever that is a remnant of God like you. Um, and, and y'all buy the land together. And they have they build their own house and land. You build your own house and land. That's compound living. And that way, when a market of beast system is enforced, you don't got to be one of the ones like the ones in the pandemic was like, oh, I'm going to take this mark so that I can have me a recreational life. Because... You can have recreational life with your own group and circle. And it's very important to find that community if you can. That's why most people, when they buy land, they don't only want to buy. Like I saw a lady in this homesteading group on Facebook. She got about 40 acres. She like, I didn't buy all this land for me. She like, I want to actually partner up with single moms. And she wanted to how single moms live on her land. That was her. I, I, I mean, that's cool, but I would prefer to do compound living with married couples. Um, but she wanted, um, this is a good community too, though, because they need a place to have family tribe. Everybody needs a support system. So actually, that's, that is a good idea. I mean, she wanted to have single moms, their children all come to live on her land. And, um, they each have their own house, of course, on that land. They all live off the growing the food, right? They all help each other grow the food. Nobody really has to um, work because they live off the land. But if right now, if you want to work, you can to earn some extra funds to do whatever you want to do with it, you know, um, to build, you know, to pay off your cars or pay off your debt or whatever you want to do. Uh, so right now we're in a time period where we're in preparation mode. This is our preparation time period. Uh, we don't know when that last trumpet is going to sound, right? Uh, but while but while we're waiting, we're not just waiting ignorantly. Now we're not just going out here having a good time at the club every weekend, uh, depending on our paychecks, um, traveling and posting pictures. We're, we're, we that's good if you want to live life great but that's called waiting in ignorance to me because you're not doing any preparation you know I feel like as remnants of God and as people who know prophecy and people who study the Bible and are heavily into the Bible and really admire having a, a, a great relationship with the Most High we should be preparing for the new Jerusalem. That means we should already be living like the new Jerusalem people. Is there not a scripture in the Bible that says they will, they will not. What is that scripture that say? Um, I'm going to have to look it up, but um, there is a scripture that says they will build their own house. Another would not build their own house. And let me look it up because I don't want to misquote it. I'm going to look that scripture up now. They will build houses and live in them, right? It's Isaiah 65, 21. Is it? Okay, I guess it is Isaiah 65, 21. It's Isaiah chapter 65, verse 21, 23. It says, people will build houses and live in them themselves. Because, you know, nowadays in the matrix, somebody else built a house and we live in it and we got to pay the bank. But no, y'all said the New Jerusalem people, who the people we should be living like, preparing to live like now, just getting practice in, uh, them people will build houses and live in them in them their, themselves. They will not be used by someone else. They will plant vineyards, amen, and enjoy the wine. And, and that means plant their own food and, and, and eat their own food. Nobody will be growing our food for us. We would not be depending on the U.S., United States economy to, to produce our food and give it to us and transfer it to us. Uh-uh. We, 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 we depending on y'all's economy. 
uh, they will plant vineyards and enjoy the wine. It will not be drunk by others. Like trees, my people will live long lives. They will fully enjoy the things that they have worked for. Amen? Because we can't enjoy the things that we work for now because we always at work. The only time people do get some enjoyment from work is when they do take a once a year vacation or a weekend trip or something. Or they might go to a concert or go out to eat. But they always got to go back to work and work is always in the back of their mind and not work as in the sense of God's definition of work. Um, work as it as it pertains to a man-made definition, like 40 hours a week working on something that, that is not laboring for Christ. Um, like trees, my people will live long lives. They will fully enjoy the things that they have worked for. The work they do will be successful and their children will not meet with disaster. I will bless them and their descendants for all the time to come. Amen and amen to that one. Isaiah 65, 21, 23. Baby, we can live. We can live. Isaiah 65, 21, 23 now. We can practice it. Let's start practicing it. Let's start making our own homemade house cleaning products. Let's start with our with natural resources from Yahweh, natural essential oils and natural ingredients. Let's start taking the chemicals out of our hair products, ladies and men. Let's make our own hair products, hair conditioners, hair oils. You know, let's buy land, grow the grow the resources we need and use them for different type of things. Let's learn about canning. Let's attend workshops about gardening. Let's attend workshops about off-grid living and, and, and listening to off-grid speakers. Amen. Let's start educating ourselves. And then once we get to educating, while, well, while, while we're getting educated, let's do it simultaneously, right? Let's, while we're getting our education, let's, let's be saving up for our land. Let's be making networks with people who can build homes from the ground up. Let's be taking price checks on the resources we're going to need to build our home. Let's see who we can partner with. Let's let's talk things over with our family members who have that same New Jerusalem mentality or that Isaiah 65 mentality. Amen. So, um, surviving the last pack, surviving the last day's podcast, we'll be doing a uh, interview only episode soon, and uh, those episodes are going to be me interviewing, maybe even off grid speakers or people who have are doing canning or teaching canning um and those are things i'm going to put in my supporter those episodes are going to be put in my supporters club access so if you want to join my supporters club um you definitely have to um visit the, the link on spreaker um and then hit join for the supporters club and um, you can always email me at survivingthelastdays at gmail.com to get the link emailed to you to join. Um, but also, what else? I think I had another announcement, or did I not? Oh, I'm still doing giveaways for the body wash, guys. If you want it, email me at survivingthelastdays at gmail.com, and I can send you a free bottle of Hey Humans Body Wash. Um you know, for listening, being a listener of the podcast. And um, let's prepare, you know, for the new Jerusalem. Let's get practice in for how, you know, we're going to be citizens, guys, of the kingdom of God one day. And so let's prepare um, and let's let's repent daily and uh, look forward to salvation and everlasting life in a land that is a paradise or utopia where we're free from the matrix. We're free from the almighty U S the dollar straining our lives. And so, um, we have to prepare and practice for, we have to have that Isaiah 65, uh, verse 21 through 23 mentality. 
So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Let me know what you thought of this episode. And uh, peace. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye. Hey, family. Are you having questions about what's going to happen during these last days? Are you a believer that we are in the last of the last days? Well, you've came to the right spot. Welcome to Surviving the Last Days podcast, where we're going to explore end time prophecies as well as scripture. Let's get started, family, and fortify each other's faith.